You're turning into News Channel 13 News where uh, we have cat hair literally f***ing everywhere. Look at how professional this couch is, okay? I don't need y'all going in the gutter and, and listen, it's not even a black leather couch. It's nice, it's a nice Wayfair suede material, okay? This couch, it may not be as fancy as other couches and it may not be as nice as other couches and it may not be as sturdy as other couches, but hey, that's fine because there are certain vehicles out there that carry that same mentality. Maybe not the strongest, maybe not the fastest or the best necessarily, but goddamn, they may be one of those at the end of the day. They'll just never let you down. I'm slapping it again. I'm Alex, Alex at FI on Instagram, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about a vehicle that has been there for you without you even knowing it. Has been the cat coffee cup in the coffee cup drawer that you've never used before until you become an adult. A vehicle that was cool before all other SUV and CUV crazes took off in the automotive scene. Okay, this was the OG. A vehicle that was built for needs you didn't know you even had. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about you wanting to own a Subaru Forester. And if you're just jumping into this video, hello! Don't forget to subscribe so we can keep making banging old videos like this. And if you're looking for oh, wheels, tires, or sus pension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com where we literally have everything you could possibly imagine for your newly acquired Forester or maybe just otherwise. And if you're looking to build on a budget while you're stuck at home on YouTube adventures procrastinating your car build in the garage, even though you should be out there and you should be working on your car because you got nothing better to do, just letting you know that we do offer as low as 0% financing so you can build your car now and pay for it once the good old gets out of here. All right, maybe bleep out the word I just said because apparently you do don't even like that word. We ain't even talking about it no more. It's out of here. It's, it's a bad word. Okay, anyway, the Forester is a compact SUV that was birthed into the world in 1997 by Subaru, sharing the same fundamental platform and principles as the Impreza. This is pretty good, okay? She just had a little bit of a bigger booty, okay? The Subaru Forester was the OG when it came to the SUV market. It's considered one of the first SUVs in North America. Hold on. Okay, I'm good that had success. I mean, they even touted it as SUV tough, car easy. All right, that was Subaru's slogan, baby. It was practically a lifted Impreza with all wheel drive and more cargo space. People absolutely loved it. The Forester would come in pretty much two trims, the free to play model and the pay to play. The pay to play had pretty much all the options, included heated front seats, some nets in the trunk, and even a leather wrapped steering wheel, which made you feel super cool, okay? It wasn't super fast and it was like, wow. But they ended up kind of getting all they're just kind of wonky. Now they're just a little weird. But back then, they're really options. There was another premium option that gave you a sunroof and a few other goodies, which I would definitely snag if you're actually looking for a first gen Forester. Now, the gens blow up out of there because in the United States, there's a million trims. But anyway, in the first generation, it was good. The car, I mean, the SUV was pretty much well received, and it was a new style of vehicle that not many people were actually typically used to. It got good gas mileage, it had decent space to boot, meant families didn't have to buy a suburban that was a bus, uh, that was a bus length long and took $86 to fill up. And you could do it in a Subaru. You didn't have to buy a town and country. You didn't have to buy a minivan because guess what? You don't want a minivan. This was the best thing you could get. The second generation though did receive the good old C6 treatment of if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality. And Subaru simply made it better. Kind of like how RuneScape added the God Wars. You remember great add-on? Okay, no fuss. But the best thing about the second generation Forester wasn't the fact that it had more aluminum bits to save weight. Oh, oh. No, and it had nothing to do with the fact that Subaru made it possible to fit more stuff on the inside, which by the way, the Forester is like playing a game of Tetris. If you ever have to move, it is the best thing in the world. Oh no, negativo, senorita. It had everything to do with the fact that it came with, not without, a big, not actually big, standard size, person. It came in a turbo, model. This was this was the best thing you could possibly imagine for the Forester, okay? It was the best thing Subaru probably ever even did to this platform that you could ever possibly imagine. The fact that it even had a turbo was awesome and it was even better 
that it was on the Impreza platform because for people like you and people like me, that's what ended up meaning the most. And it was incredible. I mean, angels cried, cartooners rejoiced. And that very specific 22 year old that was finally moving across the country because they didn't want to live in Chippewa Falls anymore and they're gonna go make it out in LA, decided that maybe doing that in S2000 wasn't gonna cut it. The biscuit, wait, what? And they ended up like saying, well, maybe I should just get a Forester and a couple, two, three years with that bad boy might do me good for this adventure. You get a Subaru Forester turbo model, you're in for a treat there, bud. Now, even though Japan had a cooler version because Japan almost always gets the cooler version of stuff, the ability to get the WRX platform in an SUV was a huge in the aftermarket community. It was at interchangeable parts for STI stuff and it was all easy to do. And Subaru wasn't afraid to let people know of the similarities in the USA. Freedom. Bald Eagles, turbo. That was a big, big thing for this. The reason that it's actually even as probably as popular as it is now is because of that singular point. Automotive enthusiasts that had one to two heathens or maybe a puppy were finally able to have an SUV that they could tinker around with, modify, and not immediately blow something up. Switching out parts to STI pieces was actually pretty easy. It was reliable, it made the Forester incredibly sharp too. Throw on the good old classic Cobb tune because that's what you're supposed to do when you buy a Subaru and an STI front grille. And by golly, you probably have the best looking SUV thing on the road. Now, the following generations continued down the path, you know, of being there for everybody, but generations over generation, they kind of adapted the Forester to enter like the everyday market. With their most recent revision to the Forester not coming in a turbo model, so I mean, fuck them, right? But it's made with the following W, it, it, like the newest generations kind of showed that maybe your uncle wasn't actually that cool. Now it turns out he's actually an accountant and it's not very exciting now, is it? But we're not here to talk about the history of the Forester and all its incredible functionality and its attributions that contributed to society as a whole. Oh no, senor. We're here to talk about you wanting to own one of these bad boys. So you want to own a Subaru Forester. All right, well set down the Ringland jokes and grab your favorite Rust-Oleum can because we're about to jump into what it's actually like to own one of these things. All right. Nearly every generation of Forester has some sort of unique twist to it that allows people to love what they are. The first generation is boxy and nostalgic. Okay, the second generation looks absolutely banging with right little bits and pieces, kind of like a little bit of makeup, a little bit of eyeshadow, a little bit of eyeliner. I don't know how all that works. The third, fourth, and fifth can rock an off-road look like nobody's business, okay? They all have their own unique thing. But if you're gonna jump into a Forester, it's almost always worth it to get the turbo model. Now you can get the non-turbo models, that's okay. But a lot of the older generations, the second generation is specifically it banging if you can get it in the turbo model. Because just trust me on this one, the turbo model goes vroom vroom, psh, you want that. You, you really do, there's nothing more fun than something that goes vroom vroom. Psh. The second generation does have some maintenance items to keep in mind, like a 105,000 mile timing belt change. There's some water pumps, some thermostat stuff, and all those goodies are good things to be replaced all at the same time. Now you're gonna wanna make sure you check those maintenance records because Subarus have this image of when those things aren't done, it does, doesn't pan out well for anybody involved. The person that's actually gonna do the repair, the person that's gonna pay for the repair, all of that bud, is gonna wanna make sure it gets done on time. You're not gonna have a good time if you don't do that. The second generation or the toaster looking one in non-enthusiast eyes is probably the most popular to put on the ground and run either a static BC coilover setup or air suspension. Now, these things look incredibly well static. Now, everything from works to pretty much NKs to Anything on this car can look pretty incredible. Anything boxy on the ground just looks like butter toast. You know, it's just something that you've always wanted. Now with, I think a Forester, it's probably best to go with some nice multi-spoke wheels. But the third generation is where the world began to evolve into this overlanding style thing that's gotten more and more popular. Now, instead of lowering it, people will lift their Foresters. They'll put a brush bar on it, two inch lift, some Oteggies and some BF Goodriches and just pretty much send it. When I say send it, they just mean slightly take it off-road. Not a lot of people are actually doing crazy stuff with that. Same thing in the truck world, but it's fine. And that's what makes these Foresters so neat. They can do so many different things and it will almost always look good, okay? Beefy tires, I see you like to party and you probably have a Yeti cooler in the back. That's cool. Swapped out your suspension to WRX suspension in your second gen because your buddy had a WRX and they wanted to lift theirs and you wanted to lower your Forester? Tells me you're going to school, but you still like to party. Slammed on the ground, static, second gen, 
you know the difference between Buchanan's and Crown, all right? And you're not afraid to tell other people about it. You have a slightly lifted fifth generation, I'll tell you what, your wife lets you modify it as long as she can drive it to yoga on Monday. Like that's all, these are, that's all okay. These cars do it all. They're across a wide span of different enthusiasts and people. And like every generation of these things are absolutely awesome. And they always make you smile when you do see them rolling down the road. And it really doesn't matter what style people are going for because it almost all looks good. Now, they are a Subaru and sometimes their interiors aren't gonna be the thing that you actually buy the car for. And you have to be okay with that. Things can get a little bit squeaky. You lift it up off the ground, you start taking it off road, things can get squeaky a lot faster, okay? You can't just pretend that you're a JK and you too can climb that hill because you're just not gonna have the greatest time. Now, is it possible? Sure but it's still Subaru. You're gonna to wanna to be a little bit careful with it. The community is awesome and the modification support is massive for the older generations. And if there is one to stick with right now, it'd probably be the second and third generation, but there's a lot of people jumping into the newer ones. The Forester has started to dial back a little bit in regards to the ability to cross transfer performance parts with the WRX and the STI platform, which is, a little bit of a bummer, but that doesn't mean that the older generations don't like to party. The Forester is a banger of a starter car to modify. It gives you space versus thinking you can daily a coupe. And at the end of the day, it's an all wheel drive Subaru. So you can pretty much drive it every day of the year. Just watch the rust, a little bit in the fenders, that happens quite a bit. Watch the timing chain, because if you don't have maintenance records for it, that's gonna blow. And understand the 1700 jokes you'll probably get about owning a Subaru every week are gonna happen. But besides that, it won't matter, because you're gonna be having a blast. So what do you think about the Subaru Forester? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension. Be sure to check us out over at fitmentindustries.com. So the one person that said, please do so you want a girlfriend, maybe one day, bud. We'll get there. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries, and we will see you later. Peace. Ah! My mic!